Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to the worship service of the Northbrook Seventh-day Adventist Church. If this is your first time with us, welcome. If you have any questions about who we are, what we believe, or just want to talk, we'll be here for you. There's a link in the description below for our Connect card. Fill that out and we'll be there. We have been blessed to partake in the 10 Days of Prayer initiative that is organized by the World Church. Today will be the final day and conclusion, so join us at 7 p.m. on the same YouTube channel that you're on now. And if you haven't been able to join us, you can watch the previous recordings on the same YouTube channel. We are in our second week of our three-week series titled Gifted for Service. Last week, Pastor Taylor talked about who the Holy Spirit is and what are spiritual gifts. Today, Elder Derek Livingston dives deeper on what a life filled with the Holy Spirit looks like and how vital it is for us. Elder Livingston is an elder at the Shalem SDA Church, and along with his wife, he runs Living in Perfect Peace Ministries, which aims to service the community's emotional, physical, and spiritual needs. To learn more about this ministry, click on the link to their Facebook page in the description below. Again, thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will be blessed. the corner 
This is Moses. He's God's friend. Moses helped rescue God's people from the mean and wicked Pharaoh of Egypt. After being rescued from Egypt, God's people needed a home, so God promised to give them one. God was so kind that he said he would give them a land where they'd be safe, a land that has good food to eat bon and plenty of water to drink. He called it the land of Canaan. After hearing this good news, Moses and God's people set out on a long journey across the desert to find their new home. Are we there yet? I'm so thirsty. When are we gonna get to Canaan? We've been walking forever. I'm sure it's not too much further to Canaan. Come on, you, you can do it. As they were walking, God's people saw something far away in the distance. But what could it be? Hey, Moses. Look, I can see trees. Can you hear that? It sounds like water. God's people wanted to get a closer look, so Moses sent 12 spies to go check out the land. The spies tiptoed into their hiding spots and looked into Canaan. What did they see? The first group of spies saw huge grapes. Whoa, look at those grapes. Those are the size of basketballs. Guys, guys, we can build a clubhouse in those trees. This is it. We finally made it to the land of Canaan. Oh, and look, it's a huge river that we can swim in. 
Cannonball! The second group of spies became really impatient. Hey, it's my turn to look! Let me see. Yeah, hand them over! You wanna look too? Come on, give me those! When the second group of spies looked, they saw grapes too, but they complained. Those grapes are way too big. Yeah, they could squash them. Those trees are way too tall. We'll never be able to climb them. And that water is way too deep. We have to wear floaties. Wait a second. What's that smell? Do you smell it? Oh, no. It's a gross, ugly giant! The spies couldn't wait to get back and tell Moses what they just saw. Hey, Moses, the land that God promised us is awesome. It has all the water we'll ever need. Ugh, that water is gross. I would never drink that. Canaan has these huge grapes. Yeah, grapes that could squash us. The trees are so tall, we could build a clubhouse. God didn't say there were going to be giants. If God can save us from Pharaoh, he can help us defeat those giants. We can't beat those giants. Yes, we can. No, we can't. Yes, we can. After all that God had done for them, the second group of spies continued to complain and have an unkind attitude toward God and their friend Moses. Their complaining was so bad that all the people around them started to complain too. God told Moses that all of the good spies who were kind and didn't complain would be able to go into the land of Canaan. Woohoo! We're going to Canaan! But the second group of spies who were unkind and complained didn't get to go into the land of Canaan, and neither did their friends. Complaining and being unkind is disobedient to God, and it's not good for you or your friends. Be kind to each other. Ephesians 4.32Good morning and happy Sabbath. Just want to say thanks to your pastor, Pastor Taylor, for allowing me this morning to stand in his pulpit and speak to uh, his people this morning. Greetings from our, our local church in Waukegan. Uh, I'm one of the elders in the Waukegan um, Shalem Seventh Day Adventist Church. I'm, gonna, I'm also uh, one of our directors. Uh, in uh, a local ministry that we, with my wife and I, we were starting in the Lake County area called Living in Perfect Peace Ministry. And we just want to uh, shout out to, to that ministry right now. But I'm not here for, for that purpose. I'm here this morning to speak uh, God's word to you and to pray that the Spirit of God may just, just infill you as you are uh, taking the time this morning on this blessed Sabbath morning to just I uh, hear a word from the Lord. And I'm going to come out of this morning out of a familiar text, a text that, that we often uh, uh, go through before, read before. A lot of you are very familiar with the text. And the text comes out of the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 25th chapter. We're going to look at that book today. Um, so we're going to just cover a few verses on the, on the book of Matthew. We're going to uh, run down to um, verse 13, and it says here in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 1. And it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be taking, take, shall be likened ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for your lamps are out, for our lamps are out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you 
but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. And afterwards, the other virgin came also saying, Lord, open us, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man cometh. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Father God, we just thank you for allowing, just allowing us to be able to unlock and open your divine word. And Father, this morning, I just pray that someone who are listening under my voice may be blessed. Lord, I pray that they, you may unlock something that maybe they have saw, saw seen before, but now, that, Lord, you'll reveal something new that they may have an experience like none other. So I just thank you in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This morning, uh, church, we, we look at this familiar text and, and the, the Bible uh, says, the a kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And we understand that the, 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 the parable that was, that was taught, uh, that was presented, was presented in, in a way where he identified these uh, 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 ten virgins as virgins. And we, 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 one of the things that we're going to look at today, we understand we're going to try to understand what the, uh, the, the reason for identifying them as ten virgins. Uh, as we look further down the text, we identify that they all took their lamps. And we also recognize that he said uh, there were those who had oil. What does the virgin represent? A virgin is a symbol of innocence, uh, a, symbol, a symbol of purity a person in, 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 in covenant with someone, not just someone who that, you know, waiting for anybody, but just waiting for some, someone specific that kept themselves uh, in a sense of purity, waiting for a covenant with someone special. It also talks about the lamp. The lamp symbolized, it symbolized uh, a symbol of God's word. How do we know this? The Bible tells us in Psalms uh, uh, 119, it says, uh, verse 105, it says, The word is the lamp of my feet and the light of my path. You have to trust the word of God. And it also symbolizes here when it talks about those who took oil in their vessel. What does the oil symbolize? The oil symbolizes the power of the Holy Spirit or the non-transferable virtue of Jesus Christ. How do we know this? Glad you asked. We look in the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 4, for example, where we see that in Zechariah's vision, we see the, 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 the lampstands and the, the olive branch was, was dripping oil into the, into the, into the, into the, uh, the piping that allowed to feed the, the, the lampstand, that the, the lampstand was able to illuminate the sanctuary. So we see that uh, what God was trying to, to say in, 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 in Zechariah's vision, we see that he was speaking to Zerubbabel as he mentioned that not only by power or, or might, but he wanted to know that the word of God will be will be preached by the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. That's what keeps the light burning. So this parable was, as Jesus speak this parable in the book of Matthew chapter 25, we see that Jesus is saying to the church, you cannot just be a Bible knowledge church. You cannot just be a place where, where you're full of knowledge. Can't just be about, oh, well, we are Adventists and, and we, 
uh, have the right doctrine. It just can't be about that. It has to be more than that. You have to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Because the right doctrine without the Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, profits you nothing. One of our favorite books, we, we, we looked at Christ's Object Lessons, page 408. It talks about without the Spirit of God and knowledge of His Word is of no avail. The theory of truth and, under, and unaccomplished by the Holy Spirit cannot quicken the soul or, or sanctify the heart. One may be familiar with the command and promises of the Bible, but unless the Spirit of God sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, man will not be able to distinguish truth from error. And they will fall under the, mis, uh, the master uh, full temptation of Satan, Christ's Object Lesson 408. See, one of the things that we recognize from this uh, message today, that, you know, when we look at how the, the wedding uh, feast was set up was, you know, in today's world, we, you know, and I know a lot of ladies may get uh, uh, offended by this, but, you know, often it, back in those days, it wasn't the, 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 the bride, uh, it wasn't the bride that was celebrate, celebrated, it was the bridegroom, okay? And it, the way it was done, it was, you know, you would have these virgins that would, uh, you know, the, the, the groom would, the, the, bride, the bridegroom would come and gather these uh, 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 bridesmaids with him. And then as he continue, he, meet, he, he goes to meet his, his, his bride. And, you know, so it, it, it was not where we do it today where, you know, we celebrate the bride. The, bride, the bridegroom was what was celebrated. The party was celebrated because the bridegroom uh, uh, come to receive his bride. Oh, it would be so nice to be, for us to be able to get back to those days uh, of when we were celebrating uh, uh, the, the men uh, that, that's coming to, to receive his bride. Um, so I, I, I know that you know, that's not the way we do it today, but that's how it was done back then. The book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 2 to 4 says, it says, Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And I want you to know something this morning that I've oftentimes read this text. And in reading this text, I've always uh, thought, uh, I've inserted something here that I thought was there, but it wasn't. Because I always thought that the, the, the ten virgin all had oil in their lamps. And I always thought that, and, and, and oftentimes it was also uh, teach that way. And because it was teached that way, I received it without looking for myself. But when I began to look for myself, it says that they had no oil in their lamps. And the, 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 the wise virgins had oil in their vessel. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, verse, verse 1 says, But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will, not lo will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, uh, betrayal, uh, despisers of good, traitors, 
Uh, it says that you could also be headstrong, uh, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So we see that 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 these uh, ten virgins all went out, and I, and I can assume uh, in my own imagination that these virgins had were all dressed up the same way. They all went out with their lamps. And the Bible also uh, identified that the, the, the bridegroom was in delay and they slumbered and sleep. But it was at midnight, the Bible says, that, that the cry came out. And because at midnight, the, the part of the darkest point of the day, and the Bible says that they rose up and they trim their lamp. And the reason why I was interpreting that the, the, the foolish virgins had oil in their lamp, but because they, when it says they trim their lamp and light their lamp, um, I want to understand, I, I was at home and I, I said, how did this work? Because there were no oil in the lamp. But I took, I have a, a, a lantern at home. And I took that lantern and I was able to get the wicker up. And I was actually able to light the wicker. So the wicker will light. But the, the, what sustained the wicker in the lamp is the oil. And these that's what separates these virgins from the, the, the wise virgins. They were not prepared for what was to come. This reminds me of a story. One of the things that I'm from the Caribbean, I'm from the island of Jamaica, and uh, we, we grew up next to a golf course. And one of the things that, that we, you know, I've all, when I came to the States and I said, you know what, I wanted to, I used to go out on the golf course and, 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 and get on the, 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 the middle of the, the fifth hole and the start, you know, without paying to, to play golf. And I, I fell in love with, with the glove, but I, I only had like maybe one or two clubs. So, you know, I couldn't do too much with it. I just did the best I can with that. But I came when I came to the state, I decided to pick up the art, the play, uh, the, the game of golf. So my, my wife was like, well, you know, this is not something that you have normally done. But I went out with a couple of friends one time with some old clubs that I got from a neighbor. And, you know, it was a real short course. And somehow, you know, they weren't as good either. So in the mix of 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 playing with my friends, that wasn't no good. It makes me look like I was pretty decent. But I went out now and I invested into uh, uh, some, some new clubs. I went out and I got me some brand new custom tailor-made gloves, uh, clubs and got me some nice shoes. I went to Macy's. I didn't just go to any store. I went to Macy's and got me some nice shirts that I looked apart and got me some nice shorts. And, and I, I looked good. And, and when some of my coworkers decided that one day they were having a golf, golf outing, and I said, hey, I, I, I want to be a part of that. And I decided to go uh, golfing with my coworkers. And we, I showed up at the golf course, and, and they were all in the parking lot. And I opened up my trunk of my car, and I pulled out my new, brand new set of tailor-made uh, glove uh, 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 clubs and pull out my shoes, and my shoes brand new, nice and shiny, had my shorts outfit, had a proper shirt. I had my baseball hat on, and, and I decided to go out there. My, my teammate, he went into his trunk, and he pulled out a, uh, a, a, some old clubs that he has, and you know his bag was a little beaded up, and, and, and my bag was pretty. And we went out there. He said, you know, we, we, we begin to uh, uh, sign up, and we got a cart, and we decided to go out and start playing golf. When I got to around the second hole, my, 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 my buddy leaned over to me and said, Man, I, 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 I wish your game was as good as how you look. And he said, man, when you pull out all those clubs out, the, out, the, out, the, uh, out your car, I, uh, I thought to myself, man, I got to bring my A game today because I'm in for some experience with this guy. He got, I mean, custom clubs, brand new shoes. So he must know what he's doing. And by the second hole, he realized that I wasn't no good at all. I was hitting balls in the water in the bushes, 
I was hitting, I, I, I mean, I wasn't doing what it looked like I, I would be able to do. So what am I saying this morning? You know, don't always judge a book by its cover. You know, Christ was saying here in this parable that, you know, you know we don't need to be the judge. You know, as a church, as he's speaking to the church, he's saying that we don't need to judge each other by how we, they, they look or someone may walk in the center with tattoo on their arm or, or look a certain way and we put them in a certain category that will make you think that they're, they're not where they need to be. You know, Christ is saying to us that we need to make sure that we're focusing on it and, and, and filling them and teaching them how to infill themselves with the Holy Spirit. Because the outer appearance does not make you a Christian. Because as we see in this in the in the in the in the Bible, as it says here, the story was teaching us, the story was teaching us not to judge someone spiritual based on, on their appearance. Okay? Because, because as we see in the text, that they were all virgins. Okay? And we also recognize that, that they all had a lamp. And not only did, did we, rec we recognize that in the text that they all had a lamp, the Bible says that they all slumbered and sleep. But what separates them is when the, the, at midnight the, the cry came out that the bridegroom comes. That was a separating point for them because now they rose up and they trimmed their lamps. And in trimming their lamps, they were able to all light their lamps, but their lamps would not sustain. Why? Because it was missing the oil. The Bible reminds us in, 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 in scriptures about the, about the sword. And the enemy came and planted te uh, tears into, in, into the wheat. And the Bible reminds us that, you know, that the servant went uh, to the master and said, you know, I, sh I should go and, and uproot the tears. And the, the, the owner said, no, don't uproot the tears. Why? Because in the process of uprooting the tear, uh, you will uproot uh, the wheat. The same way the Bible reminds us in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 7, when he talks about the, the builder, when he talks about the builder who built his house on the rock and the builder who built his house on the sand. I want you to know that they both built a perfect house. But what separates them is when the storm, when the weather change, when the weather change and the storm come, you, the, the one that built his house on the sand was not able to sustain because the foundation was shaken. The one that built his house on the rock was able to sustain because he built it on a solid surface, a solid rock, Christ Jesus. What am I saying to you this morning? I'm saying to you this morning that it is the crisis moment that always change reveal the person. When you're in crisis, it will always reveal your, your stand, your strength. And your strength should be, be anchored into Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to be a, 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 a church that is dividing, that's spending time in the word of God. How do we do this? Oftentimes we feel that we need to we, we need to do this in a in a corporative uh, setting where the whole church have to come together. Yes, that is important, but the strengthening of your faith is done in an individual standpoint where you're spending time in in, in in diving into the Word of God. You know we're living in a in a in a pandemic situation when where there's on not only dealing with a pandemic but we're dealing with an unrest. We're dealing with either whether it's social justice or just, just the craziness of, 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 of Washington and everything that's taking place around us while people 
are losing their life and, 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 and families are going homeless and families are, our children are hungry and, and, and things that are happening. We have to be able to spend time in God's word so we can fully understand what is taking place around us that we as Christians can take that information and share it to let people around us know that these things that are happening is not by surprise. Did not meet Jesus, be God by surprise. These things are all predicted. These things are all written about and the prophecy must fulfill. I want you to know something, church, this morning that please do not put your salvation in nobody else's hand. Please do not put your salvation in nobody else's hand. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 and verse 10 talks about, For we must all appear before the, the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may uh, receive the things done in, in the body according to what he has done, whether good or or bad. We celebrate the corporate worship. And we encourage, the Bible encourages corporate worship. But for your corporate worship experience to be fulfilled, to be filling, we must have a personal worship, a personal devotion with Christ. And if all of us uh, uh, begins to, to turn off the television at times, because the more you look at the television, the more you find yourself getting down and depressed and you find you're absorbing these negative energies from the television. But if you take God's word and open it up and spend time instead of looking at uh, uh, the, the, the rerun of, uh, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a rerun of a House of Thrones or, or, or one, you know, something like that. I heard, you know, someone said, did you see the, 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 that series? Or Don't spend time with that. You know, don't spend time with the, the new Black Bachelor. You know, you take up an hour, two hours of your, of your day where you can take, take 30 minutes of those times and spend in the Word of God. One thing this pandemic has allowed me to do that I've, 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 I realized that in spending time with God, I was able to recognize some things that, that I thought was there but wasn't. And as I pointed out earlier, I pointed out that that, that, that I've always thought that the, the, the foolish virgins had oil in their lamp. But as we recognize in scriptures today that the, 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 the foolish virgin did not have no oil in their lamp, but they look just like the wise virgin. Church, we cannot be a, 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 a church in our community that, does, that do not have the oil in our lamps. We cannot be uh, just a local church in our community that, 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 that look like the other churches. We have to be able to, 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 to allow the Spirit of God to move through us. But there's something else that I wanted to share with you in Christ's Object Lesson, page 411. It says, but the, uh, but the, character, is not but the character is not transferable on no man can uh, and no man can believe for another. No man can receive the spirit for another. No man can impart, impart to another the character which is the fruit of the spirit working. Christ Object Lesson 411. What is that saying? We have to come before Christ for ourselves. And when we as a church, members in the church, come together as a corporate body, yes, we celebrate God's goodness. But individually, if you want to, to be able to, to magnify and to, and to lift this church right here in your community, you have to begin to start building that relationship personally with Christ yourself. And then when you come together, then the light will illuminate this part of God's vineyard.
we continue to look at in verse 11 where the Bible says that after, after the other virgins came, came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he said to, to them, he, he answered and said, as surely I say to you, I do not know you. Why would he say that? These ten virgins, Jesus showed that 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 in the, in, in the thing that the ten virgin all had dressed as they kept themselves as purity. Yes, they all had lamps. Yes, they all slumber and sleep. But saints of God, they did not prepare for what's to come. And when the bridegroom come, they had to go to get oil. There are many of us that we may look at ourselves and say, well, this scripture is talking about those that are pure. And, and Lord, maybe I'm not, I'm not purely waiting for you. I've not made a covenant with you. This morning, I'm telling, letting you know that the Bible also tells us that we, we can be washed, cleansed by the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. That Jesus will clean, clean us. So no matter what we, we do in the past, no matter what we have done in the past, he can cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we can have hope in that this morning. But I'm so glad that he didn't just leave us with that statement of saying, as surely I say unto you, I do not know you. Because as I look further down in the book of Matthew, verse 25, we see here that when Jesus begins to explain to, his, to the people that, that in verse 34, he says, and then the king says, Unto, the, unto them on this on his right hand come ye blessed my uh, blessed of my father the inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me meat I was thirsty and you gave me drink I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. And the king said, answered and said, and the king shall answer and say unto them, in verse 40, he says, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you do, have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Saints of God, if you, if we want to continue to be a, 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 a church in our community, that's, that's, that's a church that's a light. We got to continue to keep ourselves pure waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. We have to be steadfast in God's word by carrying our lamps, okay, allowing the light from our lamps to be illuminated in our community. We have to be able to Allow the Holy Spirit to continue to sustain us. It's not just about Bible knowledge. You know, growing up in the Caribbean, we, uh, uh, we used to always heard that as, as Adventists, that we were Bible-believing church. Uh, coming in today's world, we have so, tried so much to look, oftentimes to look like other churches. But I, I want to pull you back to say we have to allow the Spirit of God to infill us that we can illuminate our community and stand in the, on the word, divine word of God. So this morning, as I close, we don't want to be a church in our community that, that doesn't allow the Spirit of God to continue to lead. So I believe that as Christians, we need to uh, 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 be a, a Matthew 25 Christian. We need to be able to be able to be service to our community. As the word says, I was hungry and you gave me meat. There are many people around us right now who hunger for the word of God. They're physically hungry, not only spiritually, but also physically. What are we doing to meet the need? The word of God says, I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. There are those that are thirsting, thirsting. For the, the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. How are we 
making sure that as a church that we are meeting the needs of our community. The Bible says, the Bible says, I was a stranger and you took me in. Is our doors open to strangers? Is our doors open to those that, that don't look the part that we, we, that we sometimes portray? Are, they, are we opening our doors to allow those that are broken to be able to enter our doors and feel and see the light that's illuminated through the anointing power of the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that uh, he, we were naked and you closed. There are those that, that, that are running naked. We need to be able to, to, to cover them. We need to not, not, not that we agree with, the, with what they're doing, but we cover them. Yes, they, have, they may have committed sin that we would look at and say, oh, these are the big sin, but all sin is sin. And we have to be able to be a church that recognizes the, the, their faults and, and, and bring them in with such a love that we cover them. They were naked and we clothed them. That's what the word of God is saying. The Bible is saying, I was sick and you visited me. There are many of us around that are dealing with certain sickness. It's not always the sickness that, end, that, end, that ends you up into the hospital. Sometimes we're dealing with sickness within. Sickness that plagues us from generation to generation to generation. And we must be a church that's able to be able to take them in, visit them in a way that they feel the love and divine power of God. Not being judged by what they're dealing with, but know that they can receive healing through the power of Jesus Christ. And then it says, I was in prison and you came unto me. Saints of God, many of us are in prison, not behind bars. Many of us are shackles to things that we have, whether it be material things, whether it be our jobs, whether it be things that we put in for the, before God. These things that we're shackled to, He's saying that we need to be free. We need to be visited. We need to be able to look back at our, our lives and see what are we doing and, and, and how, as a church community, we can be that light that to help people understand that we they don't need to be shackled to the things that they're shackled to. They can live a free and perfect life. So this morning, I just wanted to stop by here and share a word of encouragement. And I pray this morning that the Spirit of God may continue to fill you as you become that light that Jesus Christ can use for his purpose. So I pray this morning that if you're listening in your living room, if you're listening in your bed, wherever you're listening this morning, that you search within yourself. You search within yourself and you ask yourself this question. What can I do to make a difference? In some, not what you can do for yourself, but what can I do to make a difference in someone else's life? Pray that the Spirit of God may just fill you. Don't let the spirit of fear come in. Because if you trust God, there will be no fear. So walk into your truth and allow God to use you to do His purpose. So I thank you. I thank Pastor Taylor for allowing me this opportunity to come and to share. I thank your, your one of your elders, Elder Joel, for his faithfulness that he may continue to be used for God's purpose. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for an opportunity, Lord, to just open your word. There's so much truth in your word, oh God. So Lord, let us set aside the things, oh God, that, 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 that shackles us. And let's open our heart that we may be this light, that the Spirit of God may use us in a way that this church, this, this, this grounds may be a place where the community can come and know that the Spirit of God rests in, these, in, in your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.